I feel like every relationship, whether you make it to marriage or not, that person should be better off having encountered you and having had that person in your life. I know we all have our preferences, but have we gone too far yes. on the checklist? I I would I say so. so yeah. I would definitely say so. And what's going to sustain healthy marriages are your values and your fundamentals and the person's character. That should be number one. I had to make a decision to leave the relationship and that's probably to the day one of like the hardest because everybody was like, why are you like that? What are you doing? He's like the nicest person in the world. But I had to make a decision for myself. Be bold in the beginning. To, to see those things, to take time to see the person, but don't be swept up in just the romance. Thank you so much for being a part of our growing community. It honestly is just such an honour and such a dream to see how Magnify is growing. For anyone who's new to our channel, Magnify is a network, community and platform focused on empowering ambitious women of faith to thrive in our various spheres of influence. And we know how important it is to have safe, honest, authentic conversations as women of faith. And so we want to provide a space to do that. My name is Ruth and I'm the founder and CEO of Magnify. And my name's Rachel and I'm part of Team Magnify. We'll be your hosts and we'll also be featuring guests each time. So if you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe and most importantly, share with a friend who you think would benefit. On the Magnify podcast with us today, we have Sandra Garber and Abake Abu. Sandra specializes in project management and high level executive support across a variety of fields. She's also a content creator and passionate self-care advocate using digital media platforms to inform and encourage women to prioritize all areas of self-care. At Magnify, we love Sandra's vulnerability and how she shares her challenges, but ultimately leads with positivity. Abiket is the founder and director of Bixie Pots, a luxurious range of naturally sourced body and skincare products. No strangers to entrepreneurship, Abiket is also an acclaimed bridal hairstylist internationally and in the UK. We really admire her journey so far as a founder and love how her story shows how motherhood and ambition can coexist. So ladies, it's so good to have you with us today. And today the question we're asking is, is the right partner worth waiting for? So to begin with, Abigail, I would love to hear some of your dating stories. To be fair, I haven't had anything traumatic or triggering, thankfully. Um, I always thought I'd be that girl who married her first boyfriend. And sadly, that wasn't my story. Um, but I think I'm really, really quick to know when it's a no, I think is what I think was my dating experience so far. Um, I think I had fun. I got into relationships probably too early, if I'm honest, earlier than I probably should have. Um, probably stemmed from my parents' divorce and all that. But um, yeah, it wasn't terrible. But I was very quick to know when, when it was, when it was a no. However, at the same time, I don't, I don't believe in leaving relationships bad so mm -hmm. I don't have any kind of bad taste in my mouth mm. and if I like I could have you know good relationships with them now but obviously respecting marriage etc that's the only reason why not yeah but yeah no terrible experiences yeah. to be good fair. to hear yeah Sandra how about you um I've had a lot of fun dates <laughs> <laughs> um I've had very much different experiences so um I think my faith played a lot into the the type of relationships I had. So initially I, I kind of got saved in my early 20s and um, I was dating from like teens. And then as I progressed and delved deeper into my relationship with God and my faith, my relationships, my dating experiences changed. So certain boundaries were, were put in place and um, the type of men that I was attracted to changed. And then I was attracting different types of men as well because I was changing. Um, so I've dated all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been, for me, I, I take them all as learning experiences. Yeah. Um, and similar to Abigail, I'm friends with all my exes. Like we, I've, we've been able to maintain yeah. good friendships um, along the way. But yeah, for me, I've, I've learned a lot about myself through dating. Yeah. Um, I've grown so much. Um, and yeah, strengthened my, it's, it's strengthened my, my value system and, and, and my, and the standards that I've upheld for myself along the way. Um, so yeah, dating has been a good experience for me, I would say mm -hmm. overall. Just off of what you said, I think it's, it's quite important that every dating relationship 
if it ends in heartbreak, doesn't have to be viewed as an awful tragedy. Obviously, some people feel the need to mourn a relationship, etc. Mm. But I think it pivots you on nicely to what you do want and what you don't. Yeah. It helps you filter out a little Absolutely. bit better. And it helps form your next relationship to be a bit better. Because yeah. if you go through any experience in life, whether it be dating or anything without learning, then that's not good. If you literally, you know, consult God in every stage of it and then it doesn't work out, I'm very quick to say, right, lessons learned. Yeah. What we're we'll not doing again, mm -hmm. what went well, what didn't, and debrief literally. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Precisely. And you're both married women now, okay? So dating ended well <laughs> in both of these cases. <laughs> mm. How crucial was it for you, Sandra, I'll start with you, to find someone, a man, your now husband, who shares the same faith as you? How crucial was that in that process? Oh, it was a high priority for me. Um, by the time I'd met my husband, my faith was pretty much embedded in every area of my life. Like, uh, yeah, I'd, like I said earlier, I'd, I'd got saved in my early 20s and I spent literally my whole 20s dealing with a lot of trying to unravel a lot of family traumas and yeah. depression and challenges. So I really submerged myself into my faith, like going to church, fasting, prayer. I was in ministry because I was trying to fix my life. So by the time my husband came, maybe 10 years later, I was fully like embedded in this thing. So it was non-negotiable. I had to have somebody that understood my lifestyle, my choices. I had to be with somebody that was willing to delve even deeper or at a minimum, um, yeah, just try, you know, yeah, yeah be interested in, in this area of, of faith. Um, so, yeah, a, a top priority um, for me. And I also think that it's significantly the reason why my husband was drawn to me. I think he was attracted yeah. to the depth, yeah. you know. I think mm -hmm. he'd also dated quite a lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he was bored and, you know, he wasn't mm -hmm. being satisfied in that area. So I think the depth and the the... The fire that I had at the time was just something that was intriguing to him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think you bang on with that. It's yeah. shared values as well, isn't oh, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think like attracts like in that, in a good way sometimes. No, it does. Yeah. It, it does. He was in, I guess he was at a place in his life where he was like ready for something different, mm. something new. And I wasn't going to negotiate where I'd, I'd done so much work and I didn't yeah. want to be distracted. I didn't want to want anybody to come and distract me. And yeah. I finally found my place where I had peace and security. Mm. And yeah, I didn't want to be taken off that that path. So yeah. it was a big priority for me. Yeah. Absolutely. And how about you then? I think it, it was, I always had a vision of the kind of life I wanted. From mm -hmm. when I became a Christian and started living as a Christian, um, I knew the kind of family I wanted. I knew how I wanted to raise my kids and I wasn't going to compromise on that. Having said that, my husband was nowhere near where he is now in his faith. Mm -hmm. And I believe faith is progressive. And Absolutely. if you're intentional about faith, you keep growing, etc. So he was nowhere near. And I feel sometimes that is an obstacle to meeting the right person because, yeah. you know, a quote unquote, a good Christian church girl, like you, there was a word you used, embedded, submerged, submerged in your faith. <laughs> you might feel like, and I was very much in that as well. Like I took over my whole entire life and I have no regrets about it. Um, but sometimes you feel you must only get with somebody who is exactly on that mm -hmm. or, or ahead. Um, and you never really know what's in a person's heart. For me, my husband was nowhere, but I saw his, his hunger. And I did step mm -hmm. back and watch because I needed to see that mm -hmm. he was going after his relationship with God for himself, yeah. not just because he wanted to catch a gyal. Yeah. So it was, it was very, very important and very crucial for me to see that and to step back and to watch him grow. And obviously I prayed through that as well because I'm still growing. I was nowhere near faith-wise. I'm, I'm not where I was when I was 27 and when mm. I got married versus where we are now and we're continuing in that journey. Mm. So it's that intention and not being fixed on, it must be a finished work completely. Yeah. Um, like a perfect person or a perfect Christian doesn't exist. Mm, no, it's so, right. And I think also it's just more complicated dating in your late 20s, especially your 30s, your 40s. You're more established as a person, generally speaking. Sure. You tend to know more of what you want. Yeah. And so uh, you, I, I just wonder, like, and I guess it's a question, do you think we're either like way too rigid on what we want or I, I think for some people mm. just the other end of the spectrum, like anything goes? Because you've both spoken about how much you knew what you wanted, you knew who you were, you'd worked hard on who you were, and you're not expecting perfection. No, I'm not. But like, how, how did that play out? For me, 
when I hit 30, I was like, okay, God, I'm ready now. You're taking long. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, a lot of my prayer points was, God, I want a good husband. And that's when I'd hit her 30. And obviously, as women, our bio clocks are, you know, that, that added pressure doesn't mm. help. Um, but at the same time, I know the way I'm wired and I never wanted to just be a wife. Yeah. I'm very ambitious. I've always been that way. I've always gone out and done things that stretch me and interest me. Like I, I've done international work where I've worked in India and in Africa and I've taught children. And those are the things that I'm passionate about, but I still yeah. really wanted somebody to do life with. Mm. Um, but I think it's really important for women when we hit the 30s and the 40s to still ensure that they are pursuing purpose. I mm, think, yeah. yes, we do have the pressure of our bio clocks and stuff like that, but I think that it's very attractive when a woman is embedded in her purpose and mm. she's committed to growing mm. um, in every area of her life. And I think that naturally, like you said, Rachel, like attracts like, and I think mm. the right man will be attracted to that and come along. If you're a woman that's like ambitious and you're focused, you know, and growing spiritually and professionally or whatever, you're unlikely to attract a man that's lazy and shallow. You're going to attract <laughs> somebody that's, that's good for you. And I think that time that you spend doing that almost distracts you. So you're not always like under pressure and worried. And that's kind of the approach I took. I was like, mm. yes, I did have my prayer points. I want to get married. But I spent the time focusing on me, enjoying my time alone. Yeah. Um, and I always bring this, um, this experience that I had actually, cause I, um, when I had, like I said, I had my goal of, yeah, I'm 30 now, so it's time. And it wasn't happening. God was taking yeah. too long. And I remember like one day, I think I was even just like washing up at my, in my flat. And I said to God, do you know what God, I'm, when I reflect on where I am, the things that I've been able to achieve, I am actually satisfied and, I, and I'm happy. Mm. And when I think about like, biblical characters they're not known for their marriages per se maybe mm -hmm. Ruth they're known for like the purpose that they fulfilled yeah, and the things that they achieved and how they overcame challenges and I want mm -hmm. to be known for that I want my legacy to be like okay what did Sandra do as opposed mm -hmm. to she was married to so and so so That's if excellent. I don't get married Lord I'm actually okay with that and yeah. it was a genuine prayer costly prayer but <laughs> yeah. genuine and I think I met my husband like two weeks after that, but I remember having that conversation prior to that. I'd be like, no way, mm. like I have to be a wife. I have to be a mother. But I did come to a point where I was like, you know what? I am thankful for the person that I am and mm. I'm coming and I'm enjoying it. Mm. So God, even if you say, this isn't for you, I've got other things for you. I'm happy with that. And he actually came along a couple of weeks after that. And I think that place of surrender mm. yeah. um, is where God is like, okay, I can trust you to yeah. move to this next phase in your life. Mm. Abigail, what was that like for you then? So when you met your husband, were you like, did you know straight away? No, did you... <laughs> I did not. I did not know straight away. And we got married really quickly, actually. Mm. Um, but I was, I was very much, I just literally just, just, just come out of a relationship and I mm. met him and there was that instant kind of but I was not in that place and I was very much like in fact the words I said to him were when he asked for my number was you know you seem like a really nice guy and I have a lot of single friends so I'll take your number <laughs> if you don't mind me passing it on um which I didn't and then we met literally a, a, a month after that and then started dating um, almost immediately but I don't think I was in that place no mm. not that I don't think I know I wasn't in that place of um God, where is he? And I do say that because it's a bad thing. I just wasn't, I just wasn't there, maybe because I was younger. I always had this thing, and maybe I took it for granted that I just always knew that I would be married with kids. I always saw that. And I know we're not talking about motherhood per se, but I remember when we couldn't have kids. And I remember praying a prayer similar to what you prayed when you were washing your dishes. And I said, God, I would love the honor and the privilege to raise mm. children in under your your guidance and your leadership and to raise them into wonderful creatures however if that's not what you have for me I'm okay with it I remember yeah. that prayer and it was a prayer through tears as well yeah. Yeah. um but I meant it but back to um marriage I I don't I never had a list because I know that's a thing now I know that's a thing you write he must be this he must be that he must be this I never had that I think I had more what he must not be. Yeah, Does yeah. that make sense? I think for me, it was, he can't be an unbeliever. He must have the same faith as me. Mm -hmm. um, 
he needed to kind of be going somewhere like financially. Yeah. He didn't need to be a millionaire. That wasn't <laughs> yeah. a thing. I know that's yeah. a thing now. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a thing then for me because I love the beauty of working with and building mm. together. together. It says something. Obviously, it depends on what age you get married mm. as well. But for people who have waited longer, and I feel like sometimes people feel because you got married relatively young, you didn't you didn't experience the weight. The mm. weight was a different weight. Like yeah. time is relative to God. Like you said, God, you're mm. taking long, but that's nothing in yeah. God's eyes. Mm. Like what is long? Mm -hmm. And I have a really close friend who got married um, at 40 mm. and I saw her two months after and it was like she'd always, always mm. been nothing. Mm. There was nothing missing, nothing wasted, nothing. Mm. There wasn't this void of like, oh, finally you're married. Oh my gosh, I wish it happened earlier. Mm. No, it was perfectly seamless as if this was always what God had for her. Yeah. And for some, it's to get married in your 30s and 40s and for others, it's in your 20s. Mm. But I think if you're trusting God, what do you have for me and when do you have it? just relax and live, I think. Mm. Yeah. And the checklist thing I want to talk about, because <laughs> mm. I think there's a huge difference between values and shared values and like, okay, we're going in the same direction and we're, we're kind of working from the same page. What do you think, what is your opinion on kind of the, I guess it's a trend. It's just becoming a bit of a culture now of having the checklist. And it's not like, you know, we want to have the same faith and be going in the same direction. It's like, six plus you know six figure salary like it's height model body yeah. height like i know we all have our preferences but have we gone too far yes. on the checklist i i would I say so. so yeah i would definitely say so i think what you do with a checklist is you alienate what could be I'll, I'll give you a really trivial example the other day i went to zara my favorite shop and i i had in mind i needed to buy a black dress that went out like that <laughs> And I, it just needed to be fitted and out. <laughs> and I looked and it, the kids were at school. I had a day off. I was just going to enjoy myself. I bought nothing because I was so fixated on yeah. this black dress that came yeah. out. Mm. There's, Zara's full of so many shoppable things I could have bought and looked nice in. But because my mind was fixated on that particular style, that's a trivial example, of course. But to bring it back, I would say when you make specific mm. checklists of height, skin tone, nationality, village even, you know, <laughs> you're limiting yourself mm. to actually what, except God has come down and said, this is what I have for you, write it down. Yeah. Otherwise, don't, don't limit yeah. yourself. I think it's more important to say things that you don't want to compromise on, I would mm. say, yeah, um, mm. is more important than being specific mm. on what you must have. Mm. I could be wrong about yeah. that. Sandra, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, finding the right partner is, I still think it's subjective. Mm -hmm. What necessarily is right to someone is, is not yeah. to, to, to another person. But I do agree with Abike that it's become a trend now to like have, I think right now is defined by a man, if we're talking about like what women consider right partner, having a man that can provide a comfortable, secure life for you. And I guess that means that the man that comes with the money, the car, the house, and extra for you. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody, but you know, there is this, what is that word that everyone's used at hypergamy or whatever like they want like the guy that's going to be the provider and everything and i and, and to an extent i do agree mm -hmm. that i yeah a man should be a provider i think it reflects 100%. spiritual order in a home yep. yeah because the men are to be the head of your home but i think if you're going out looking for a rich man then your, your options are you're limiting yourself number one <laughs> and you're again you're you're forgoing the most important thing which is purpose like mm. you can get the rich man and be miserable yeah. you can get the rich man and completely miss your destiny or whatever so I just think for me personally what my focus was always on character character and also does this person's vision um align with mine Are yeah. we, can we walk together can we do life together um it's a bonus if he's got money and he's financially secure yeah um but that wasn't like the number one mm. i think we need to be careful to just make sure that character and and that we're, we're, we're able to be to, to, to be compatible and get along and Absolutely. you know we can see ourselves in the next 10 20 years doing things together that was the type of questions and conversations that me and my husband would have like what do you want to do in the next you know like, yeah. where do you see yourself and then you know if you gel and if yeah. it will work but if you're going by this list and all these dating rules and yeah. it may 
get the attention of somebody, but will it sustain a marriage? Because mm-hmm. ultimately you're playing a game when you follow these rules and these kind of like how to get a man. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you, you're playing a game and it's just like, actually, is, is this something that's going to sustain a healthy marriage? What's going to sustain a healthy marriage is are your values and your fundamentals and the person's character. That should be number one. I, Absolutely. I, I'm old school in that way. Yeah. yeah. And Abigail, you said, which I loved, that the checklist kind of doesn't leave room for growth as well. It's almost like a rigid view. It's not a person. We're all flawed. And like we might have some amazing highlights about ourselves, but it can be that we're expecting so much. And if somebody doesn't meet those 30 points, That's it's kind of like, well, okay, they're not for me. Yeah. And, and it's almost like we've got to redefine what right is as well. Yeah. But in your, so before you met your husband though, in your dating journey, and um, I'd love to hear from this from you first, Sandra, yeah. were you ever tempted to settle earlier on? So you said you felt you'd waited a while, you've hit 30, you're like, this was not in my plan, God, where are you? Were you ever in a situation where you're like, oh, I'm tempted to forego an important value? Or were you just like, no, you were so set on what you wanted? So when I would meet a guy, um, a a potential, yeah, partner, at that stage, I wouldn't settle or compromise. I would, it would have to feel natural when we'd go on a date or we'd talk. It would have to flow right. But I think an example is where I I almost, I don't even want to use the word settle, but I was like, I can maybe forgo these things that I don't like was um, I was in a relationship with somebody and like I was saying initially that I'd grown so much in my faith and even in that relationship I was still growing and evolving into a completely different person to who I was when we first got together and I felt like this person wasn't Mm -hmm. and as much as our relationship was really beautiful actually like you know we, we we got along we had fun we were friends we were actually friends as well before we got together for a long time and he was just a nice guy he was just the nice guy that you wait for mm-hmm. but I did feel like in certain areas of my life whether that be um spiritually professionally um I'm, I'm quite an ambitious person I felt like he was not on the same path as mm-hmm. I was yeah. and I was struggling with that Mm. Um, struggling one because he was he he didn't do anything wrong to me he was nice Mm. and also I was questioning whether I was being shallow and fickle and these feelings intensified and I just was like do you know what I'm not satisfied Mm. and it's either I can stay in this safe space because he's just going to always be the nice guy that treats me really well or I can actually go for what I really want which is somebody that is not exactly like me but somebody that shares my values in terms of ambition growth spiritually like we wanted like I, there's a fire that I that I had that he didn't he was just like yeah I'll go to church if I, you know mm-hmm. that wasn't working for me um and so I had to make a decision to leave the relationship and that's probably till this day one of like the hardest because everybody was like why are you like what are you doing he's like the mm-hmm. nicest person mm-hmm. in the world and he was <laughs> he just like he, did, he was such a sweet and sweetheart but I had to make a decision for myself. I knew within myself that I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't happy. Yeah, I I need to be at peace with every decision Mm. I make. Mm. So I left that relationship. I didn't settle, but I could have easily settled because it was so easy to, because he was such a good guy. Um, And it was painful for both of us. Um, But in the end, it worked out well because then I eventually trusted my instinct and I did get the type of person that I felt Mm. matched my aura. (laughs) I think because a lot of the stories we hear are I had to get out of this toxic relationship it's a lot harder when things are actually good and comfortable and not necessarily bad but perhaps not just quite there it's it's way harder um how about you Abigail do you ever tempted to settle I think the convenience um or to get on this wave of the romance can easily get you swept up and and tempt you to and somebody who on paper looks like this is the right person comes from the right family you know the Mm. values yeah they're christian tick that box but for me one thing i've always said is show me this person's heart i've always Mm. prayed that to god show me Mm. their heart show me their character Mm. show me who they really are because anyone can say anything and i've fallen fallen victim to the lyrics before um 
And I wanted to see a person's heart. And it's not to say they're a bad person, mm-hmm. but to reveal who they really are. Because, you know, people say you don't really get to know someone until you've lived with them. And like, I'm not going to do that. So mm-hmm. I'm going to need to know before. <laughs> um, and I think in that situation, it was just God showed me how something about them was a big clash for me. And mm-hmm. I just kind of had a preview of the rest of my life just clashing yeah. like that. Yeah. And... I said no to that. Mm. Um, and I just didn't want to, it could have, it, could I have made it work? You, it was a gamble. Mm. And I didn't have that piece of like, mm, not going to, not going to gamble with something, yeah. you know, personality clashing or values that I have that you don't, or even just upbringing. Some people are just brought up different. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah I wasn't raised like that. Mm. So it's, it's, stepping out and realizing early enough I feel like it's quite crucial to to have that early enough rather than you've given your heart and time and the whole family knows everybody and people are asking about the wedding day like be bold in the beginning to to see those things to take time to see the person and don't be swept up in just the romance and the romance is so important but don't be swept up in just the romance see who's behind the person I think that's what what it was for me and when I saw I thought no thanks yeah. and even if you find out along the way I would be still bold. yeah be bold still mm. trust your instinct because that's what happened to me yeah. like I was I became a different person along the way but I was highly in tune with with my instincts and what I wanted and now I think that was actually the Holy Spirit I'm saying mm. you know what this is not what I have for you mm. so even if it's like years in I think yeah. life's too short and yeah we shouldn't settle for something. and I, th- I think for me as well the more because again, I did get married really quickly from when I met my mm. husband to when we got married. But every time and every season that passes, I'm so grateful yeah. that it was him. Yeah. Mm. And I don't say that to say I married the best man in the whole world, but I married the best man for me. Yeah. Um, mm. And he reveals, and I, I say this to him, I say, you define husband to me Wow. with, wow. with each each hurdle, season, fun time, hard time, he defines it to me. Mm. And I knew that it could it could only have been mm. been him. And yeah. I'm grateful that the Holy I think I think if you're literally yielding to God's direction, he will continue to guide your step. Shall yeah. I take the next step? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Shall I take the next step? Mm. Yes, go ahead. It's it's not always a this is your husband, <laughs> go you therefore. It's not always that, is it? It's mm. it's little you know nudges and mm. go ahead and go ahead and mm. you just keep checking the more you 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 practice it as well yeah. it becomes you become more sensitive to that still small voice yes. or that gut feeling um i feel like i've become really good at that um and i guess we call it discernment but yeah listening to that th- those yeah. nudgings it's because a lot it's, it's scary to mm. listen to mm. at times isn't yeah. it because it's just like a lot of time it doesn't make sense or it goes against what looks you know, right. But yeah. like, um, yeah, I think when you, it's there for a reason. And I think the more you practice listening to it, the more sensitive you become and you start to trust yourself mm. and say, do you know what? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think we talk a lot about red flags in dating, of course, right? And for some people, that's red flags on the checklist. For others, that's values. But what were some of the green lights, I guess, when you were both dating your husbands? What were some of the key things that you're like, yeah, this is a move forward? It's not a red light, it's a green light. That's a good question. My green light was the way he loved me. I actually fell in love with the way he loved me. And he was all in really, Mm. really quickly. Um, I don't, I know it's... Things are more common now. People text more than phone. But if you're not calling me, texting me, all that, I don't, I'm not even, I've never been in, I just can't entertain. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like I just, not in an arrogant, prideful way. I just, Mm. I know myself, I would never, ever chase a man ever. But he chased me, not chased because I don't play hard to get, but he came for me with everything. Like he knew that he knew that he knew that it was me. And he made that known to me, not just in the things he said and the way that he acted, the way he behaved, the way he was zealous with pursuing me. Mm. And I fell in love with that. Yeah. That's what I fell in love with. That was a huge green, massive green flag for me. Mm. So you mentioned about being bold. Do you have any kind of practical thoughts, practical tips on all? what it looks like to be bold or how just to be bold in that situation. Okay. Just to clarify and caveat this, 
bold doesn't mean rude or arrogant, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the flip side is girls are, I'm too, I'm too nice for you or, or they're rude or you leave somebody more damaged than when they met you, which is so wrong. Like, I feel like every relationship, whether you make it to marriage or not, that person should be better off having encountered yeah. you and having had that person in your mm-hmm. life. Um, so t- being bold for me practically was knowing who I am. Yeah. Knowing who I am and knowing what I stand for. This is the kind of person I am. I have value Mm -hmm. to me. Um, In addition to my ambition and my goals, who I am as a person is going to change your life, actually. (laughs) It's it's knowing that you you joining and aligning with me is going to be beneficial to you. Mm. So that boldness comes in... If, if you're not going to be doing that for me, I want to be bold enough to identify that and to not worry about if I let this person go, would I ever meet someone else? Mm. Am I letting go of the real deal because I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to compromise? It's being bold. But for me, I think God, God literally directed that in me. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're consulting him in every stage of your life, mm-hmm. whether it be your, your work, your schooling, your your career, your parenting, yeah. same thing with your dating. We consult him in so many things. God, I need this job. Is this the one? So why do we put him first in the middle of the relationship? You're in it. You're in the relationship. You decided to go on a date. Now put him in that. Yeah. What shall I do? What's my next step? And when he says no. And sometimes the no isn't audible, it's a check. It's mm. it's that inward witness is the voice. It's, mm. it's being courageous enough to, I'm going to step out and say no. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had to speak to a few young ladies about this. You are obvious in a relationship that's not going anywhere, mm. but you've invested three years already, four years already. How am I going to walk away from this? Mm. Be bold and know that what God has for you is better than this. Yeah. Surely it is. And I know it's risky. And I know it probably seems like, well, you're you're married in your house telling me to, <laughs> yeah. you know. And it's risky to say something mm. like that. But it's, I'm not telling you to leave this relationship. I'm telling you to to talk to God who you choose mm. to, to love and to serve and who you believe is directing and ordaining your steps. Yeah. And let him show you and give you that boldness yeah. to, to gently say no. Yeah. And I have a thing about that, by the way, is you can break up nice. Like mm. you don't have, it doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be tragic. There are times when sadly relationships are so toxic that you've, it, it has got to be that. But if it's not toxic, if you just know that this person isn't the one, you can do it nice. Yeah. You can do it yeah. with integrity. After that. Yeah. One thing I was thinking about when you were speaking was about it, it's easy to kind of find someone where you can be good for kind of to each other and be kind to each other, but being good for each other is different. Yeah. And that's that like shaping and sharpening. And, you know, you were saying like, I'm going to grow you, like I'm going to have an impact on your life. We we want that both ways. Right. Yeah. So that's so important. Just, just to touch on that mm-hmm. really quickly. We're now 13 years in. Um, and did we get married on a whirlwind? Yes, romance. But whilst I say my husband defines it, recently we've gone through we've gone through probably what we had no idea we'd go through. And he looked at me and he said, I'm grateful it was you, because I know that if it wasn't you walking me through this, you know, we wouldn't have come up, we wouldn't have come out on the other. And it obviously has God through me. Obviously it's not me, I have no powers, but the the union and the the quality that you have and like you said the submersion and the the downloading of everything that god had for you you don't know what it's for later so true. you don't know what that's for later yeah. and it's only time that reveals who and why god has put you with this person it's not just you know a baddie on Instagram, so you've got to marry her. It's not yeah. that, and, and vice versa. Girls, I don't know what the male version of a baddie is, but sometimes a girl <laughs> wants that as well in a guy, but mm. you need to look underneath for mm. some serious substance that's mm. going to hold you through, mm. through this yeah. life. Right on. That. How about green lights for you, Sandra? Like, what were two or th- well, maybe two of the green lights? You're like, this, this is the one. Selflessness. His mm. selflessness. Um, yeah. When I met my husband, actually, I, thought I was trying to avoid him, like the plague, because <laughs> visually and just the way he, not in terms of like his, his appearance, but his lifestyle, mm. 
intimidated me because I was just like, oh, no, he's too fleshy. No, he's not. I'm definitely not. I want a good, quiet church boy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was just like, no. And it took a lot of persistence on his side. He, mm. We had a lot of mutual friends. He would get them involved and get them to speak to me. And I was like, no. And the other thing was culturally, this would have been a problem for my dad because he was very much against me not marrying out well me marrying outside my our culture i'm from ghana my husband's from nigeria oh, and that's like a no-go in that general yeah. for my father's generation and um <laughs> yeah so he'd actually told me from very young like don't ever marry a nigerian oh, wow. so i knew growing up that don't even go there wow so when i met my husband i was just like okay too many exes just no too many exes like i didn't really have a list but i just was like this is not going to work for me um but my husband was similar to what abika was saying he was just he from from jump he showed showed me that he he loved me and he would do whatever it took to 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 win my heart if you like um, but I think the things that when I started to like you know what let me actually just have a conversation with this person because he's relentless let me just it doesn't kill to have a conversation the more I had a conversation and got to know him and understood his mind. He was just so giving. And to be honest, I had, had dated a couple guys in the church and they were like, this guy was just like someone that I judged on the outside, like, oh, he's too flashy or whatever. He was so kind and mm. giving and selfless. Like, he literally would do everything for anyone, you know, strangers. Um, a couple of times when we went out on dates, like he would do things that just like help people at the door and whatever just he just and at first you're like you're trying to run game on me but <laughs> you then start to see that no this is his personality he just yeah, does it yeah he just does these things and I was just highly attracted to that and then the other side of um the other another uh, green flag is when we started to get more serious and you know I was at a place um financially where I had wrapped up some debt he's so financially secure he's you know he's got his business he's like I don't want him to think that I'm going to come and be a liability in his life I have mm. to be honest with him I have to tell him I have debt I've got debt it's like the worst thing in the world <laughs> so I remember we were having a conversation like, I've got something to tell you and he was just like what and I said you know what um I've got debt and he was just like is that it and I was like yeah no no but it's like really it's a lot <laughs> and I've not been responsible I, I went for a season where I wasn't working and I you know, whatever and um, he was like that's in life you know that is like that the smallest thing we can handle that you've said it now mm. we can handle that and now he's like what's yours is mine what's mine is yours and I was like what because yeah. I didn't come from that background okay. my parents were like this is mine and this is mine so I was just like what does that mean mm. and he was like how much is it and I couldn't even say how much I was so mm. like yeah I was just so worried of him judging me because he had everything together um and when I did eventually say it, he was just like okay let's put a plan together that leadership for me was yeah, just like yeah this is everything I want from all <laughs> the leadership of let's put a plan together mm. what do you need to do this is that and yeah who do you you know whatever were you married and, no and wow, it, we were literally amazing. but he was just so pragmatic and just like it's fine it's not the end of the world let's get through this like this is my problem and your problem and he I was expecting him to you know help me to bring up a plan of how to clear it myself he cleared it for me but he's just like, I'm going to teach you how to wow t take this head on but I'm actually going to clear it for you because wow. you don't have it at the moment and mm. I want to show you that I am a provider and when challenges arise I can be there to help carry us for me, I was just like, the leadership of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more than, oh, he has the ability to do it. It was mm -hmm. about the initiative he took and just seeing it as, I just felt safe. I felt like, yeah, this is somebody that sees we're on one team mm -hmm. and this is someone I can be safe with in a marriage. So I would say his selflessness, his leadership, mm -hmm. um, and just making me feel like we're, we were on the one team. Yeah. And he was good to you in clearing your debt, but good for you in showing you, like, how this is how we're not going to get into this, this situation is how it's again. again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, I agree that kind of leadership and yeah. direction is like, wow, Amazing. if I ever have to bring something before him again that I feel ashamed about, or mm -hmm. he's not going to he's not going to fly off the handle or be like you, you know it was his response that's yeah. what made me feel it was just like this is not the worst thing in the world mm. I needed that because I was like tormenting myself like mm. oh you're so irresponsible how could you rack up debt mm. and he's just like I know grown men that couldn't even manage themselves in your situation you're still living you're still eating you're still doing what you need to do Amazing. well done he actually was like well done and I needed that in that moment that reassurance and I think 
that reflects God in a way. God gives us that reassurance that yeah. I've got you. No, yeah, he's not God, but you know, in mm. terms of spiritual order, it's that similar thing of it's not the worst thing in the world. You've been open, you've been honest. Let's mm. there's a solution. Yeah. I, that's all I needed. And mm. yeah, that I would say was the green flags for me. So you were talking about how your husband pursued you relentlessly and that was a real positive to you. When is too much too much? Have you had any experience of that in the past? It's a really good question, actually. Um I think if you have feelings for somebody or are drawn to that person and they're pursuing you, then you respond to that and it's attractive. Once you have no feelings whatsoever for this person or they repulse you, or what's the word, the ick? The ick. Yeah, the ick. <laughs> if that person is giving you any ick whatsoever and they're chasing you, then it's too much. And I would say you have to very clearly very kindly make it clear yeah. it's a no without yeah, being rude without kind of stringing them along because sometimes people feel like if I ignore the person would they get the message no I think you've got to be really direct like mm. I had to outright say I'm really flattered thank you so much mm. I don't see you like that and I never will mm. you're more like a brother to me because when you put the brother in when there, you bring brother in it's, it makes it's clear. it like yeah Friend zone. Kill every fire, yeah. <laughs> Friends own it, brothers own it. And I would say, because unfortunately, when that's left un, undealt with, I can't think mm. of the word, it can be cross those yeah. lines into stalker, into like uncomfortable. But mm. once you, if you like somebody and they're pursuing you, it is so attractive and it draws you more mm. when you are not drawn to them whatsoever. Red flag. Yeah cut it off, cut it down, block, delete, mm -hmm. move house, just, mm -hmm. just do it. <laughs> be direct about be direct it, basically. And nice, yeah. direct, let them down courteously. Yeah. You can even big them up. I do yeah. that. You're such a great man. You're going to make somebody so happy mm. one day. It's not me, but a woman's yeah. going to love being with you. Yeah. I think clarity is so important Clarity. In that. Absolutely. And then I think we've talked quite a bit about what we're looking for, what, what could the right partner look like. But what about the responsibility on us? Like, what about working on ourselves and what we bring to the table. Sandra, do you have any thoughts on that? Oh yeah, I've been on quite a journey with this one because when we initially got together, I would say I was the one that was more kind of spiritually, I don't know what the word is, but yeah. It's more mature. Mature, so exactly, the spiritual mature. Um, and so when we got married, um, the thing is, when you get, <laughs> when you eventually get married, you think, oh yeah, I've done the praying and the fasting, I'm good now, like, mm. no more. <laughs> and actually, this is where the real work and challenges actually yeah. come in. And I was kind of naively taken back by a lot of the challenges that we faced in our, in our marriage at the beginning. Uh, um, it's going to be our fourth year, we've been married four years. Um, but there were things that about myself that I didn't even realise were still there that came out quite quickly. The minute the door was shut, <laughs> my, my, my suitcase was <laughs> unloaded, unpacked. It was like, yeah, there were things that I wasn't, I was surprised to see that came out. So when you live with somebody that you've not lived with before um, it, and, and challenges come, it starts to expose who you are. Mm. Um, I think they say like marriage is a mirror. Oh, it yeah. exposes like the things that you carry. And one of the things that I thought I'd dealt with that I hadn't dealt with was anger. So mm. I had like a lot of anger growing up dealing with like family issues and whatever and that came out full force in my marriage and as much as my husband was doing things that I didn't agree with or making choices that I, that for me I was against at the time my responses to it were like he always says it's like so disproportionate to what I'm like the things that you're complaining <laughs> about like the way you get mad and whatever and you shout and whatever and I was very much as they say in my flesh in the marriage like arguing always wanting to be right it almost became like every man for himself, like who's going to win this argument? Um, and I would just get so angry all the time. It didn't help that I got pregnant two months after we got married. So the hormones were just like, I always say, you think you've not got the best of me. You've not had the best of me because literally we've gone into like parenting or whatever straight away. Um, but it got to a place where my anger took over and I had to, it started to stifle our communication. It started to stifle um the the yeah just so the way we interacted with each other it's almost like we didn't like each other a, a lot of the time because mm. he felt like i was disproportionately like reacting to things and i felt like he was disrespecting you know my uh, my opinions and whatever and it, i became really down actually in the marriage 
And I had to come to God and tell God that I was disappointed because this is not what I waited for. <laughs> you know, I expected more from my marriage. And God was literally re- turning the mirror back on me and saying, like, well, what about what you're doing? Is it right? You know, is this the way you should be handling yourself? And I just kept, I just was like, I'm justified. I'm justified. I'm justified. If he's not doing certain things, I'm justified. I have a right to be angry. But the way in which we, you can be angry, but, you know, the Bible talks about do not sin in your anger. And I was doing things that were just unnecessary. Mm. <laughs> I would be cussing, you know, just like, yeah. And I had to get to that place where I was, yeah, I, I had to get to that place of, 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 I guess, repentance and saying to, you know what, God, um, there's things that I've said to my husband that has really hurt him. And um, I can't take that, I, I, I can't ignore that. I've said things that have been damaging and that have hurt him. And it's sown a bad seed. And, and, I'm, and, and I'm really worried that we can't recover from some mm. of the things that I've said. I was not even focusing on the things he did. And I had to literally go before God and say, God, you know, forgive me. And please let my husband forgive me for the things that I've said that he's maybe not let go of. And I went through a a, a period of like fasting and praying and asking God to like, just show me where I'm hurting him. Um, And yeah, and teach me how to love him. And I really, I always say this to my friends, I don't think I can love my husband the right way without God, because I'm always going to just uh, revert to operating from my flesh and just like doing what I, whatever I want to do and say. But there is something that the Holy Spirit teaches you when you become, when you get into this institution of marriage, if you surrender to the Holy Spirit and allow God to teach you how to love your spouse, it can be really beautiful. Um, and yeah, I had to go through that process and it was very, very, very difficult, very humbling. Um, you know, there were times where he would do something and my natural reaction would be to, and I would have to pull myself back and say, actually, just keep quiet. Just let him say what he wants to say. He's having his moment. Um, and that was very difficult for me. But the more I did it, the more I practiced it, I didn't like have to, I didn't necessarily have to always respond to things. And he started to respect me more because he would, you'd be like, you know what? she's really mature like she just like walks away from things now she doesn't have to like always like respond and that's just made us appreciate each other more it's made me grow as a person more I feel like I've grown in wisdom in terms of how to love my husband um how to protect my husband how to protect our marriage Mm -hmm. um but yeah it took me facing the things that I was doing the things he was complaining about you can't ignore it. If he's, mm. if your partner has a complaint about you, it's it's valid. You have to, yeah, you have to um, receive it and then work on it. Otherwise, you're not going to sustain a healthy marriage. It's just yeah. not going to work. Yeah, I think. So, yeah, I think working on working on your person is is present continuous, isn't it? You yeah. never you never get to a place where you're oh, I'm done now, yeah. perfect. Mm. It's never it's never going to stop. Um, I would say for women who are people even if men are listening um (laughs) in that place of waiting you're not in that relationship yet what are you doing to better yourself you Mm. hear there's so much out there now and you know like personal development and you know Mm. perfect your skills and you know bring your own bag all that stuff but I think some really trivial things is physically are you Mm. are you looking after yourself are you Mm. looking in a way where you know the guy's going to stop because one thing I've always said is obviously it's the inside that matters who you are on the inside but Mm -hmm. something on the outside is going to make him cross the room first (laughs) to to see if he wants to know what's on the inside first so making sure that you know you're looking good you're looking after yourself Mm. for yourself yes primarily but also for the kind of the kind of person you want to attract um I think that's that's something that sounds really shallow but I think it's quite important um Self-care. That's, self-care. What, that's why I literally 100%. advocate for self-care. Self-care. Because it carries energy. If you practice self-care, you carry an energy, confidence, self-assurance. Absolutely. And there's so many areas of self-care. There's mm. physical, like you say, there's spiritual, True. there's professional, there's environmental, mm. keeping yeah. your environment. Like I'm very passionate about this stuff. But particularly in relationship, you need to uphold yeah. that self-care element. Because one, it's going to inspire your spouse as well if you're taking care of yourself and your life is thriving. Mm. And also if you're not in a marriage and you're dating, if you are prioritizing self-care and you're just growing and you're evolving, eventually 
if the person isn't on par with you, they will just fall off. Like yeah. it will just naturally just fall off because they won't be they won't be able to manage your capacity anyway. Yeah. So I would say prioritize self self care, growth, and mm -hmm. yeah. I think that will definitely absolutely mm -hmm. and and make then all on the difference. some of the practical things that I did was mm -hmm. I would I would learn about what marriage like I would learn mm -hmm. a lot about parenting and marriage mm -hmm. when I was unmarried um it's it's just one of those things where you just you're you're just learning on the job aren't you mm -hmm. and Again, it's present continuous. I still am, but I remember going and sitting with married women. I remember listening to people because my parents, you know, sadly div divorced mm -hmm. and had quite a terrible marriage anyway. So they were no good example to me, but I think God probably dropped in my heart that I wanted better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just consciously educating myself, right? So I want a good marriage. What does that look like? It's yeah. not yeah. it's not by accident. No. Like what intentional things am I? What does a what does a great marriage look like? Mm. What kind of things do I want to be as? How do I want to be as a wife? What kind of wife do I want to be? Mm. You know, there's a scripture that says iron sharpens iron. And I and I joke with my husband that God needed to to help the world. So he made me married to you so I can be a better person. <laughs> it's it's it is kind of like that. It's every every time you butt heads, it should make you both better. But what skills can I learn beforehand mm. to get me ready mm. for marriage? Like those conscious, conscious things I think are helpful. Yeah. Like don't go and buy a dress or anything, but <laughs> but start getting yourself your mm, head ready. in that in that right in that right mm, space. Yeah. I'm gonna be a wife one day to a man, I'm gonna be a mother to mm. people. What does that look like? Mm. I would love to know just for people who are waiting for the right partner or they're trying to find the right partner, what would be like your one piece of advice? I know you, I'm sure you've got loads, but yeah. like if you could highlight just one thing, what would you say? I would say just be be honest with yourself. I can't say go with this type of partner or that type of partner because like I mentioned earlier, the right partner is subjective, but you have to know yourself, know thyself. <laughs> know thyself, know what you want and, and be honest. Don't ignore the red flags. Pay attention to the green flags. Listen to that that still small voice, listen to your instincts because it, it never lies and it is essentially it is the Holy Spirit. That's what's worked for me. That's what's helped me kind of filter through the other, the previous relationships and get to the relationship I'm in now by really listening to myself and being at peace, paying attention to that peace that I had in the relationship. Um, I, 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 in terms of a criteria, I can speak on that because my criteria is different from yeah. Abby Kays or from yourself. So, mm. But just listen to what you need from that person yeah. and 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 prayer helps that i would 100%. say through prayer you will get to that place where you, you you understand what it is you need and you have the boldness to make yeah. those decisions amazing i'm okay um i would say this is somebody who's not in the relationship they're looking right mm. i would say relax into it yeah mm. relax into it god's got you Mm. is what I would say. He's out there. You only need one. Mm -hmm. He's out there. Relax into it. Um is 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 my is my advice. I could say so many things, so many on, things. Yeah. on the subject, but I would say relax into it because sometimes we're so panicky, especially when women clock, etc. Mm. God's got you. He mm. loves he loves to show himself in this way. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I've had an entire education <laughs> and just just the beauty of thinking about wait, waiting for the right person or like looking for the right person can be complicated. We know it is not trauma free sometimes. We know we can get there in a difficult way sometimes, but trusting God, I think through the process and like knowing yourself, trusting your gut, mm. prayer, like involving your friends in the conversation, not over a checklist, right. but yeah. over real values like okay is this person going to be able to last with me yeah. <laughs> not in a negative way but are we going to be able to last together 100%. through a marriage and like this yeah so many good things about the green lights and the green flags so ladies thank you so much for sharing thank your you. stories thank you so much <laughs>